hello guys uh, today we are going to talk about the corticospinal tract also known as the pyramidal tract so let's start so before uh, so like well, what will be our strategy here focus here uh, so let's say this is our left hand side so in the left hand side there is numbering i just wrote so motor cortex uh, internal capsule midbrain pons so it is medulla upper level medulla lower level and seven spinal cord so we are going to see how this fiber is crossing this each level uh, from the top to bottom okay so let's uh, start with our motor cortex so focusing this uh, right side diagram uh, we can see here the lateral view of our cerebral hemisphere so you guys know that this is our central sulcus here you can see our pre-central sulcus, here you can see our post-central sulcus. And this region is our, we can, we can say pre-central gyrus or we can say primary motor area. And this one will be our primary sensory area, right? So let's write here. So it is our primary motor area. Now focus here, this one, this gyrus and this guy. So, the superior gyrus will be known as superior frontal gyrus and this inferior will be known as inferior frontal gyrus. So when you are comfortable with this, again, uh, one can say like in which lobe uh, these are located. Okay, we know frontal, parietal like this. You see, whatever you can see in front of the central sulcus is our frontal lobe. Okay, so this area, what we are going to talk about are located in frontal area. So here you see, Posterior, posterior to the central sulcus and up to this one, this sulcus is known as our parietal occipital sinus. And here you can create an imaginary line. This will be our lateral sulcus. So this will be our what? Parietal lobe. This will be our occipital lobe and imaginary line. So this will be our temporal lobe. So yes, this is basics, but there is no harm to revise. Now let's focus. So Again, see, in so here you will find a sulcus. This will be our superior frontal, uh, sorry, gyrus. So superior uh, frontal gyrus. Here will be our middle, and here will be our inferior frontal gyrus. Right? Superior, middle, inferior. So this is the basic thing uh, you have to know before we move forward. Now see here, I wrote down here motor cortex, and after that I wrote down three important points we have to remember regarding to our motor cortex. So let's see. So you guys already know what is the primary motor area. Now there is another area at the frontal lobe known as this one. So this will be our supplementary motor area. And here you guys can find one another area which is known as the premotor area okay so what is the significance of this area so remember when you are going to do a motor action such as when you are going to flex your biceps so you have to make a plan before executing a action so this and this area makes plan okay so this two area makes plan so now you can easily say which area will execute the action right so this two area will make a plan and send the plan to our primary motor area now the primary motor area will execute the action it means then the fiber will go uh, downward and at the end it will go to our motor plane end to execute the action now you have a basic idea how these things are going on now see, so in the first point, I wrote down the primary motor area, supplementary motor area and pre-motor area. You guys know this. Now see, when I, now see below, I wrote down some percentage. So there are some descending fibers. But in reality, what we see, in reality, we see that from this area, you know, uh, what is this area? You know, what is this area? So this descending fibers, here will be some descending fibers. It's count up to 30%. You guys know this area? So it counts up to 30% and you guys 
no this area this was our so if this is our central gyrus so it will be our post central gyrus right so from here you like scientists saw that 40 percent of the fibers are descending so this is an information uh, you guys have to remember now our second point is homunculus so what is this so let's come to the this section so again when i so let's try to visualize another thing you know this section so definitely it is a coronal section and now see in this diagram the coronal section is like this okay so we are seeing this section here now using this portion is what this portion is our lateral portion so like this orange section here is this one what we can't see in this lateral view is the medial portion and this is the medial portion we cannot see but it easily visualize here now again homunculus now we are going to draw a rough homunculus here we know like that this is our lower limb then it goes like this then this is our hand like this then we draw a face here like this then we have our tongue here and in the end we see our larynx so this is the homunculus so what is the significance or how you are going to interpret it, this homunculus again i told you for an instance from this region if one fibers is descending it will innervate the lower limb distal portion if one fiber for suppose this fibers is dis, uh, descending from that position so it will innervate the distal portion of the upper limb it's easy right now see <clears throat> if one fibers is originating from here and then it is descending so it will innervate the laryngeal and tongue muscles which will produce the vocal the voice yes so this is what the location of broca's area so see in this lateral view so this is the location of broca's area okay so this is the significance of homunculus i hope uh, now you are getting the real meaning now our third point is cell of best what is this now see so again focus this segment so this region is what this region is our cortex in introduction video i already told you this cortex region is what accumulation of cell bodies right so now you see we can say now we will find here cell bodies right now scientists has found that there is one particular cell specifically found in this area which has a, a large cell body and high myelination like this okay yes so this cell or this neuron has a special name and it is known as cell of best and this is the cell you know which descend downwards so yes there will be some normal cells so sir this will descend or this will somehow manipulate the action yes they will manipulate the action of this cell of base how let's suppose this is the normal cell okay this is our normal cell this is our cell of base okay now this is moving downward okay but some contribution normal cell also makes via the interneuron so signal is coming like this then it is going via this interneuron and manipulating the action of this cell of base so it is connected via interneuron okay yes so now you have the whole concept like how the action or plan is making from where it is going to where and how and other some and you can mug up one another information we know cerebral cortex has different layer okay but the fifth layer from the fifth layer or at the fifth layer all this descending fibers cell bodies are located so this is the cell bodies so for an instance and it's fiber uh, descending downward so this cell body is located at where so fifth layer of our cerebral cortex okay yes so you have everything you got to know regarding our motor cortex so motor cortex is now clear okay so this portion is done now see this fiber is coming down and it is written that 
it is crossing the internal capsule now see this region in the introduction video i already told you guys is known as diencephalon and the other whatever structure you are seeing are known as telencephalon yes and i guys already told you all the structures of diencephalon but we will revise here briefly now see you see this dark area this is our gray matter and you see this white area this is our white matter no doubt okay so let's focus here so this is our thalamus this is our internal capsule okay so internal capsule and to be more specific this is our posterior limb okay now you know this is our lentiform nucleus then you see a white a small white this is our external capsule okay and at the end you will get this insula structure so this is what the structure of dine sepha now now you see internal capsule so internal capsule is structure is like this okay now see you are viewing this structure anteriorly okay so you can easily say this is the posterior limb and this will be the anterior limb yes so the descending fibers are the uh, pyramidal fibers so this region is crossing the posterior limb of internal capsule and descending downwards claro so you guys know what is the internal capsule or where it is located and other stuffs so this is done now come to the level of midbrain so one can say sir this is how they are located so like if you are having a heart problem to visualize like again uh, internal capsule that how the midbrain is, is there any other structure in between them no there is no other structure in the introduction video i already told you to memorize this sequence because this is the actual sequence how our central nervous system is situated or the actual uh, structure sequentially okay now let's uh, move to our midbrain you see in midbrain okay i will uh, make a, another video in midbrain but for now just focus here so this black dot is our cerebral equiduct okay now for an instance make a virtual line here and you see this black area this is known as our substantia nigra so this region is known as tectum in between it is it is known as tegment and from the substantia nigra to frontward is known as curs cerebri okay so this is known as our curs cerebri so in this curs cerebri so again try to visualize this is anterior so this is anterior and this is posterior view okay and you see this red structures these are all red nucleus and this dark black color is very equidactal gray matter so yes uh, we will discuss about it later but for now let's focus in the cursory brain so in cursory brain you see this blue structure yes this is the location where this all fibers are crossing the midbrain so important point you have to remember the actual particular location where the descending fibers are crossing from the midbrain and this location is known as basis pedunculae okay and if you want to know the actual or to be more specific let's enhance this diagram okay so this is our substantia nigra and this is one cursory bri now you see we can divide this into five parts if say this is medial 1/5th this is lateral 1/5th and the middle 3rd 5th this is the actual location of basis pedunculae okay okay now let's move forward now the descending fibers has crossed the midbrain now it will cause our pons now the fibers is at the level of pons now let's try to see what happening you see for an instance this is the this is the bundle of fibers now you say this fibers are spreading see these fibers are spreading like this the first question should be arise why the fibers are spreading right so common sense says there has to be some obstruction yes there is obstructions see in this mini diagram this is midbrain this is pons this is medial oblongata and our spinal cord okay 
normally we uh, already talked about p4 pons p4 pregnant and why it is pregnant again it has many pontine nucleus okay that's why uh, it is swelled up yes so that is the reason why the descending fibers spread here and it makes these small bundles and these bundles are known as basis pontus okay so basis pontus we see here so okay now we are done so we can say at the pons at the tegmentum so in anterior the anterior portion of the pons is known as tegmentum okay the same as the midbrain the same naming okay there is no different naming so <clears throat> you guys know okay from which level the fibers are crossing at pons level and how now interestingly you see uh, at this level at the pons level the the fibers were spreading now the fibers are merging again right yes now see now we got a single cord why and the upper medulla now pons is done now we are at the medulla level so at medulla level you can say okay the fibers are again at the same joint now you see again this is posterior this is anterior the sec uh, the section you see here you can see one swelling like this and another swelling like this yes it has significance okay one swelling like this and another swelling like this so if you guys try to let's come here and make a mini diagram this is the anterior view of middle oblong letter and you can see this swelling okay this swelling so the medial swelling is known as pyramid why because under this we can see this pyramidal tract and the lateral this swelling is known as olive and why olive because you see here olivary nucleus yes now you see in this diagram so this blue section is what our pyramidal tract and this orange this part is our olivary nucleus that is the reason we see two swelling at the upper level of medulla oblongata again so now you guys know at the medulla level where the pyramidal tract is crossing now when we are done at the upper medulla level now come to the lower medullary level at the lower medullary level you see a very important event decussation of pyramids so decussation means what decussation means crossing okay cross now see this was the main fiber okay now it is crossing so let's see here so it was originated at the left side now it is crossing to the right side like this okay so the crossing happens so 90 percent of the fibers are crossing but you see 10 percent fibers which were coming from the left side is not crossing so 10 percent is not crossing yes now you focus so definitely there will be some fibers coming from the right side the right side will cross to this left side so this is our it's crossed and now it is in the left side and definitely here will be see that 10 percent of the right side fiber which will not cross so now you guys know what happens at the lower level of medulla decussation happens okay so decussation of the pyramid or decussation happens so decussation of the pyramid means like when like uh, focus in this mini diagram so at the lower level you guys will find this kind of structure in the anterior thing so this represents the decussation of the pyramids now you guys are comfortable uh, with this structure up to the medulla or lower medulla level or we can say up to the decussation now we uh, we are left with the spinal cord for spinal cord i just magnify the same picture because i want you guys to notice some microscopic structures focus here above mid thoracic level okay and here is written below mid thoracic level why it is written like this yes focus on the dorsal column you know the dorsal column right so in the dorsal column in case of above you see fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus but focus on the below you will find only the fasciculus gracilis right yes this is the first difference you guys have to remember and what is the concept of 
what is the logic behind this? You know, fasciculus gracilis is for leg, right? And fasciculus cuneatus is for upper limb. Now say, upper limb, definitely the fibers will not be in the lumbar region or sacral region or lower thoracic region, right? It will be the above the thoracic and definitely in the cervical region or segments of the spinal cord. Yes, this is a basic thing. Okay, now let's come to our main topic. So let's say this, so fibers from the left side were coming like this, 90% of the fiber. So 90% of the fiber were like this and 10% of the fiber is here. So, so focus the difference. The majority of the fibers are going to wear the lateral white collar. But the minority is going to wear, you guys know this is our anterior white collar. And to be more specific, in anterior white collar, medially. Okay, so this is medially. And again, you see in the uh, lateral white column, medially. Okay, so this is the first uh, point you have to notice. Lateral white column and anterior white column. Now, what happens? Now, at the, uh, focus at the 90% one. So, first it ends here. Okay. And definitely you guys already know this is our anterior gray horn or ventral gray horn. Right. Now, see, the fibers is ending here just, uh, just before entering the anterior gray horn this small neurons yes this small neurons is known as interconnecting neurons okay so interconnecting neurons yes so this interconnecting neuron is stimulated then the so if you say this is first order this is second order this is third order yes now the third order is coming like this and you guys know this is our in the introduction video i already told you this is our ventral rootlets ventral root then this is our spinal cord right now see this is what happens in the 90 percent so at the level of spinal cord so let's say this is the left side oh sorry this is the right side okay let's do this in a good way so let's say this is the right side and this is the left side the fibers from the uh, at, at the case of 90 percent the fibers uh, of the right side is going to where at the right nerve right now see at the case of 90%, the fibers ended up well, anterior white column, but left side of anterior white column. And this fiber is a decussation. Okay, it's crossing and giving one branch to stimulating this fiber. Okay, this outgoing fiber, or we, we can say, okay, you know, this is known as what? Lower motor neuron. It's stimulating the lower motor neuron. So this is our lower motor neuron. So you are uh, clear with this, right? Now see, the same thing can uh, happens with this left side of bundle, right? The same thing will happen. So this is the uh, basic concept of how the nerves are emerging. Before that, uh, I have a concept here you guys to remember. Let's say, in this region, let's change the color. So for now, let's say, if I make a virtual line here, in the upper segment or in the down segment, if I make a horizontal one, you can see this one part of a gray matter, this one part of a gray matter, or in the down side also. In upper portion, you can see, okay, this uh, will be lateral, this will be medial. In the lower segment, you can say this is posterior, this will be anterior, okay. So this is how you can uh, say, but the both thing are easy. So posterior, lateral, anterior, medial, both are the same. The important point you have to remember here, the lateral, this, let's change the color, this lateral part, segment, you know, the lateral, not segment, this is our fiber. The lateral fiber actually comes to this lateral uh, segment of this gray matter. And the anterior, comes to this one so if this is our anterior you can say anterior comes to this medial or anterior let's say in the down section you can say anterior comes to the anterior 
so this is in uh, advanced neurology you will find this one this is all you have to know the first point the in the lateral white column it doesn't decussate anterior white column the fibers when uh, come to the anterior white column they decussate when they decussate they will not decussate in every level they will decussate at that level when they are going to release their nerves okay now or you can say the lower motor neurons for an example this is one segment this is one segment this is one segment okay so this fibers anterior fiber okay so now this anterior fiber will give the lower motor neuron at like one two three second segment so it will decussate at the second segment then it will release this lower motor neuron now say this is another fiber it it doesn't it it is crossing the first it is crossing the second now it has to release its lower motor neuron at the third level so it will decussate at the third level then it will release its neuron or lower motor neuron so now you see so here it is written anterior corticospinal tract and lateral corticospinal tract now i can say now you guys can easily visualize what is anterior and why it is lateral now what is the end point see here the end point is motor and plate motor and plate mean muscle so i told you to make a plan of flexing your biceps yes so for an instance let's see this is your biceps yes now you can flex your biceps so i hope this uh video makes sense and please uh, share subscribe like and comment down below thanks